College Board of Trustees, February 18, 2021. It does not appear we have a quorum yet. So we will jump to five uh, informational items. Dr. Drum, can you give us the president's report? Sure, Mr. Chairman, good evening and welcome uh, everybody. Uh, I wanna start out by <laughs> Thanking everyone uh, from the Board of Trustees all the way up through uh, our students and all the faculty and staff in between. Hard to believe we're approaching a year uh, of this uh, strained environment with, uh, with COVID and it's not, not gonna end soon. Uh, we all breathe a sigh of relief when, when spring gets here and we can you know, look at some more outside, uh, outside activities uh, gather outside and maybe put pop some tents up and uh, and whatnot and warm enough days to have classes outside and, and so but that's the first I think relief valve we're we're going to see. Uh, great to see the, uh, the number of cases kind of leveled off in the five to six hundred range and the testing our values staying below one. But uh, this this plateau that we're at's been going on for a while and, and I think we'll we'll continue for a while and, until we can get more vaccines out there. We were supposed to be vaccinating today, but we're not because the shipment didn't arrive uh, for, for the county. And this has been going on and off since the, you know, since the beginning. Uh, but every, every time we've run the, the vaccine uh, operation or, or the hospitals have run the vaccine operation in the ICE center, it, it's been very smooth. And, uh, I want to want to thank our campus safety custodial uh, and our uh, IT and uh, operation and and our health science students who've been helping out with testing. Testing's been going very smoothly, uh, several hundred up to almost a, you know seven eight nine hundred tests a week that we're doing for folks who are on campus, and that's been going very smoothly. We thank everybody for uh, pitching in and uh, and being tested on a weekly basis as a result of. Uh, the number of cases in the community and, and here we're we're getting a few cases each week uh, but that's what the testing is that's what the testing is for uh, we, we're doing some uh, uh, testing further testing of a pool that came back with, with some positives in it on uh, on Monday on Monday or Tuesday and that's we've been getting one two or three uh, each week but it's it's been going uh, very well and as far as we know nobody's uh, suffering any uh, any serious symptoms uh, from uh, having uh, from having tested positive. So, kudos to, to everybody, and you know, got to hang in there a little longer and, until we can get outside. And uh, you know, the president's the president's talking about you know back to normal for the holidays. Uh, I've been mentioning that for, for quite some time. Uh, we'll see what happens with the vaccines, and, and hopefully we can be somewhat normal in, in the fall. At least that's the plan. I, my hope would be to be 50-50 in the fall with 50% of our classes on campus and 50% online. You know, we, we may not be uh, much different than that in future years, uh, quite frankly, with the advance of, of distance learning over this last intense uh, year. Maybe 64 or 70 525 in the fall anyway, 70, 30, uh, we may be 60, 40 or closer to 50, 50. We'll see what the market, um, what the student market desires and what we can deliver with, uh, with high quality. But we're, we won't go back to 75, 25 uh, online, 25 online. Well, I suspect it'll be 30, 40, even 50% on, uh, ongoing, depending on how you count online. We'll have hybrid uh, and uh, high flex uh, classes that will be some online and some face-to-face. -face. Um, how we'll count that, <laughs> whole new categories, uh, we, you know, we'll, uh, we'll probably count them uh, separately, but some of that will, will be online uh, and on campus adding to our, um, our digital presence. So uh, look, look for more of that for the rest of our lives. Uh, spring sports. I, I think I mentioned last uh, last month. We, we expect to to run our our, our spring sports pretty uh, reasonable to uh, social distance and be outside for uh, baseball, softball, tennis, uh, and uh, even even talk maybe about some spring soccer. So we'll we'll see what uh, what's available out there. Who's available out there to play? Who, who can muster a team at that time of year? Uh, and uh, what, what will be uh, what will be available, but we're really looking forward to 
for bringing sports back. Our esports team is going gangbusters. In fact, maybe um, next time we have student services on, on the uh, on the list, Carol, we ought to have an update on our uh, on our esports competition. That'll be a new uh, new horizon for everybody to uh, to learn about. But that's uh, that's exciting. Really, really good news. Although it's just the beginning of the end, and that is our middle stage report was uh, submitted. Uh, our self study uh, was submitted uh, late last week, early early this week, some, somewhere in there. So, thank you so much to Kim and Penny for your leadership and all the uh, the standard teams. Uh, each of the was it seven teams that, that worked on the uh, on the standards, and then the overall uh, steering committee. We can't thank them uh, enough for about three years of of work uh, leading up to this. Uh, we continue uh, to do our middle states work and it's, you know, it's continuous improvement. So it's, it's really year round every year. Uh, and it's important for us to, to do that. You'll see an update of a, uh, of a policy and the, you know, that we're, and you'll see more in the future uh, where we've been kind of bringing our, our policy manual uh, up to date, big, big part of what uh, middle states is for to, to remind us to, to do that and to get on a regular cycle to do that just as we review our programs, our, our academic programs on a regular cycle. So exciting that uh, that, that below, how many pages is that report, Kim? It, it is a 100 pages and then a 15 page supplement. And of course, all the evidence, I'm not sure how many hundreds of pages of documents that is, but the report is about 115 pages. Thank you very much for your for your leadership. Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, and I want to um, end by uh, by thanking SUNY and our, and our new chancellor for their continued support through this whole COVID, uh, whatever we're going to call it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the historians uh, call it, COVID era. I mean, uh, it's turning into an era. Um, it, it, SUNY's uh, support has really been uh, terrific, including with the, with the tests coming from upstate medical that, that they developed. Turned out to be, we're fortunate, turned out to be one of the best tests in the country. Uh, there is a day or two lag to get the results, but it's, it's highly reliable, and, and that's been a great thing uh, for us. So from that and all the support we've gotten from Albany and uh, best practices from different institutions, I want to continue to thank SUNY for all their support. It's, it's been terrific to be part of SUNY through this. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Drum. We're going to jump back up because we have a quorum. So item 1.0, approval of minutes. Can I have a motion for approval? I'll move it. Moved by Nick. Second. Second by Kathy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passed unanimously. Committee reports. Kathy, you want to give us an update or trustee Connerton on the facilities and Sure. Uh, you are happy to. We had a good meeting on February 16th. The minutes um, are attached. Uh, all of the preferred agenda action items were discussed and are recommended for approval to the Board of Trustees. Um, we had good update from Dr. Drum and also, um, as always, all the committee reports, including um, Michael's finance report. Um, I think we had a lot of good discussion about the projection to the end of the year with all of the impacts of the uh, state budget and and on continuing negative impact of COVID. So um, it was a good meeting. The minutes are um, attached. Be happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, we would recommend the minutes for approval. Okay. Can I have a motion? So mm -hmm. moved. Moved by Kathy. Second by Jason. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed unanimously. Uh, Item three, preferred action items. Uh, I believe there's no conflict of interest, so I'd like to have a motion to approve 3.1 to 3.5. So moved. Moved by Kathy. I'll second. second it. Second by Sharon. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed unanimously. Uh, item 4.0, action items recommend approval of revised college governance presidential authority policy. Can I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Kathy. I'll second it. Second by Sharon. Any discussion? Just an FYI, we had this reviewed, um, you know, by County Legal Bob, Bob's office and, and everybody here multiple times. It's been up to, shared with uh, with shared governance. Uh, but as with all of our policies, they aren't in stone. If you know, it, we're, if the one that was in there was kind of outdated. 
uh, and uh, actually quite outdated. And uh, we, uh, we was past time to update it and, and, and good that we did, but you know, anything uh, that may come out of it that, that causes any uh, issues or awkwardness, we can go back and change it. None of our policies are in stone. And the board can update them or, or change them at, you know, at any time. So, and it also isn't absolutely necessary to be approved at this meeting. If you wanna take more time to look it over yourselves and pass with the next meeting, if you haven't had time since the packet came out, that would be fine too, because it's, it's an ongoing process. Does anyone need any more time? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 It looks like it's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, 5.2, Middle States update. Trustee Ball? Uh, I think you got the best news uh, from uh, Dr. Drum uh, that the report has been submitted. And I wanna add my bravos um, to Kim and to, um, to Dr. McLean and to Dr. Haynes. Um, this has been an amazing process um, as someone who's watching from the outside. Um, I, I'm, I've just been so impressed and I continue to be. And um, I think that the only thing that I would add um, is that the video that showcases the campus that was mentioned in last month's um, is finished and it's, it's being sent to the visiting team um, and that team, as we talked about last month, uh, that team has been completed um, and approved and led by Dr. John Connolly. The team's virtual site visit is still scheduled for March 29th through the 31st. Bravo to the, um, the steering committee and its leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Ball. And I just wanna say thank you for your leadership and uh, and everything you've done. I know there was a lot of effort that you put in personally and it's appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Just a, a quick question, if I could. I know there was a discussion at one point about uh, that March 29th through the 31st virtual visit that trustees should uh, reserve some time. So I don't know if you have any schedule yet in place for that. Uh, certainly block, don't plan to block off three full days. So I'm sure that uh, it would be a, a short period. So I don't know if you have any sense of when uh, we might need to be involved yet. I'm gonna leave that to Kim. Do you have uh, any sense of it or Dr. Haynes? Um, typically, probably within the next week or two, possibly three, they will start contacting us and trying to set those up. I know you usually uh, they're not looking for more than a max of an hour to, to meet with, with the trustees, but you know, we can work with them also to try to find the most convenient time, whether that's early in the morning or potentially a lunch time. So we can, you know, depending on what the preferences are, try to push that to a convenient time. What they look for is as many trustees as possible to make that meeting. And of course, the, the more that can make it, the, the better we look, but they, they don't ever expect everyone to be there and nice if it can be that way. Yeah, no, I just, I certainly want to participate if I can. And, and like everybody else, of course, the sooner it's on the calendar, then the easier it is to make sure that happens. I've blocked off uh, that weekend um, and uh, anticipating a real schedule. So I do plan to attend. Great. Thank you. Uh, 5.3, College Assembly. Maureen? Hello, everyone. Um, in fact, you should have received the College Assembly report. Just to let you know, we had approved and endorsed a couple of academic calendars. The first were some revisions to the spring 2021 calendar. This was in response to COVID-19. SUNY provided guidance that students should not be having an extended spring break because of the opportunities to travel, um, bring COVID back to their communities or back to our community. And so there were mini breaks put in place. We also endorsed the 2021 through 2024 academic calendar. And this included a new 717 model. So if any programs want to be able to offer their programs in a 717 format, that would be seven weeks on, one week off, and then seven weeks on so that students can complete their courses no more um, fast, uh, high paced format, they have that ability to do so. We had our fall 2020 
Your Voice Matters in November of 2019. It was a virtual event. And I think that really created some additional opportunities for folks to participate. We had roughly 40 participants from across campus and the shared governance chairs were able to pull those findings and present that to the executive council. And one of the themes that we pulled from that is that there may be a lack of understanding about the budget. And, you know, Michael Sullivan does a great job and comes to all of our college assembly meetings and provides those reports. And so we want to be able to expand upon that. And we're working together right now to create a professional development event for our campus to help folks engage better with our budget and finance office so they understand the financial impact. In the report, I had put that the college assembly chair elect update that I had been nominated and accepted um, that will have to be revised. I actually, my last day at SUNY Broom will be next week. And so I am bringing this up to our shared governance. We have our next meeting on Monday, February 22nd to be able to fill the college assembly chair term for the spring 2021, as well as having someone nominate for the chair elect position. And so hopefully you will receive that information in your next meeting. Um, and one of the things that we're working on is the shared governance chairs is to implement a two year chair term. We're reaching out to some of our other institutions. A lot of institutions do have a two year term process. And we think that that could really help improve creating more sustainable leadership and allowing the functionality of shared governance to be more effective and efficient. So our Council for Operational Issues Chair will bring that to College Assembly this week. We had Dr. McLean and Dr. Haggerty present the self-study report to College Assembly members um, this last month. And we actually sent a save the date with that virtual visit so that folks knew when our um, visitors will be virtually attending. And if they need to connect with anyone that hopefully will have some more flexibility and availability. As mentioned, Michael Sullivan has provided budget updates and forecasts to College Assembly. And I just see for us this evening, our previous Faculty Council for Community Colleges or FCCC rep was Dr. Stephanie Malmberg. As she has stepped into the Assistant Dean position, congratulations. Um, she was able to recruit a new faculty member for us. And so a huge thanks to her for that. We now have Dr. Mary Donnelly from our liberal arts English department, who's going to be serving in that capacity for the remainder of her term. Are there any questions? That concludes Thank my report. Maureen. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Very thorough. Good luck to you. Uh, 5.4 Academic Affairs, Dr. Penny Haynes. Thank you. Um, as you can see, most of, most of the information is provided in the written report. Um, just a couple of things I think that are important to highlight that I'm very proud to say the faculty continue regardless of the modality and even in we're, though we're in this remote format to continue to hold book discussions and, and presentations and music presentations and theater presentations, which really is, is pretty impressive considering we're doing this all in a remote format, but they've done a great job with that. Um, in addition to that, it, it wasn't included in the monthly report because it came in after we submitted the report, but Professor Sandra, Sandy Wright from the BIT department um, has worked for quite some time now on, on a, a grant project that she started called Sarah, which is a Sunshine Electronic Health Record Academic Simulation, which is a very, very good program that's helped our nursing and our health information technology students to have this simulation, which has now been expanded to physical therapy and rad tech. Um, she's actually been invited to present to SUNY Online during their Open Education Week, which is pretty impressive and also has gotten her open educational resource um, picked up by Merlot. So very proud of her also. So lots of really good things taking place. As far as academic affairs goes, we have been working hard as Dr. Drum and Maureen mentioned on schedule development for fall. Um, been trying to find out what the best mix is going to be, but yes, we've landed on at least hopefully 50% being back on campus with a combination of course of the availability to provide synchronous and remote um, courses as necessary. Also working on some new um, developments with the seven week, which would, which would be some, starting with brand new students in a new program. So we've got several programs that have identified trying this new seven week session within the 15 week, which is a really 
powerful tool to aid in retention. It allows, allows students to focus on fewer courses at one time and kind of shorten the time to completion so that they're able to complete credits, which has been done very successfully across the country. So we're really excited about implementing that with some of our programs and also some new modalities. And as Maureen mentioned, we're very proud to have a new assistant dean who, is re, who oversees distance learning and professional development. And that is Dr. Malmberg. And she's gonna talk about a couple of exciting initiatives that we have. So Dr. Malmberg. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so good evening. Thank you for letting me join you tonight. Um, as Dr. Haynes and Maureen indicated, my name is Stephanie Malmberg. I'm the new assistant dean of distance learning and professional development. I have just a few things I'd like to cover for you today. The first is the launch of Circle In. Um, so in the shift to remote instruction, one of the more apparent impacts has been on our students' ability to engage with and seek assistance from their peers in informal ways, increasing their engagement in our courses and building community at the college that supports their success. SUNY Broom has partnered with Circle In. This is an app that provides students with a platform to collaborate among peers in support of their academic pursuits at the college to share notes, discuss course concepts, and study for quizzes and tests. The college believes Circle In will help bridge the student experience and engagement gap brought about by the pandemic with the goal to replicate the organic peer-to-peer -peer learning that has historically taken place on our busy campus. Circle In launched the second week of the semester, and so far we've had over 230 unique downloads by students, a number we anticipate will rise as we push out more marketing to students and faculty. And if you'd like, I can give you a, a view of the of Circle In, um, the app itself. I'll just quick share my screen with you. I always say quick, and then I remember that I'm on a Mac, and there's nothing quick about it. Hopefully you can see my screen there. Um, so I can only show you so much of the student experience because really Circle In is a tool for students, but I can show you here that this is my online platform for my course. Um, so this is what a student sees. And then on the side here, um, they can find Circle In. Um, because we use my course as a test course, almost everybody has signed up for Circle In. Um, but when I click the link, what it will take me to as a faculty member is as a, a dashboard. So it'll show me some information about um, flashcards, questions asked, the type of uh, tasks that have been created, tasks that have been uh, resolved, notes that have been uploaded and things along those lines. Um, as a, in the student view, which I can show you only so much of, um, but hopefully it'll show us. It's entering student preview, it's not doing it very quickly. So a student can come here, they can select circle in. And then if they're a first time user, they'll see this information here. And so here they would type in SUNY Broom. We come right up. <clears throat> and then they can use their single sign on um, in order to access mine save with my little thumbprint. There we go. And if I was a student right now, I wouldn't be seeing oops because I'm a faculty member. I don't have access to what a student sees, but honestly, what you would see is much like what we saw in my view, which is on the left-hand side, we would see a list of, a, of the students' courses and they could click into each one of those and then um, perform study actions related to that course. I'll stop sharing my screen now. Um, I do have another um, update for you quickly. Um, I wanted to mention that we have a one-time professional development grant initiative design, designed to support high flex instruction. The course design innovation grant can support up to 10 faculty members in developing their course in the high flex model. And our hope is that as the emerging scholarship is indicating, we can meet more students on their terms and provide an educational option that students can customize based on their external needs and as these needs fluctuate. 
along the same lines of innovating our faculty development and aligning opportunity with the academic affairs goals of the college, we're also looking to support faculty with a professional development grant initiative related to stackable credit and non-credit micro-credentials, which we're really excited about. Not only can this help enrollment and attract more students to the college even after the micro-credential is earned, these micro-credentials will be anchored in the needs of local industry and can serve to strengthen existing relationships and create new partners in the community. And that concludes my report. If anyone has any questions. Thank you, Dr. Mulberg. Thank you. 5.5 uh, student assembly update. Uh, I don't see a zeal on the call, so we'll skip to 5.6 BCC Foundation report, Ms. Williams. Thank you. Um, hi, good evening, everybody. It's nice to see you tonight. Um, your, my report is in the packet, and there's a lot of financial detail. Um, basically, uh, just to let you know, uh, through December 31st, 2020, um, the foundation is um, showing a... Um, net gain of approximately $4.88 million. And not coincidentally, it's directly related to the uh, uh, increase in the unrealized gains of our investments. So that's um, changes in, in with uh, changes to the market, but we're pretty much right on par in terms of um, a gain and not um, losing any money at this time. So that's the good news. Um, our campaigns are moving along. We are changing up some of our tactics because we are unable to have an in-person student phonathon program this semester, uh, but we have made up for it in some other ways, uh, especially having to do with a uh, challenge campaign and our direct mail. Um, the Spring Magazine is currently in the process of being written and designed, and our goal is to have that uh, in the mail and distributed to folks the first week in April. Um, I wanted to let you know, we, I had told you before about a virtual uh, event, our first virtual event that we uh, actually hosted on February 4th and retired uh, distinguished professor uh, Rick Ferenzi from biology and a um, graduate from the class of 2017, Nick Venuti, who um, went on to film school, uh, actually hosted a presentation where um, some foundation funds that we had actually were able to use to support uh, a video taped um, presentation for students of the biology field trips that they normally would take, but because of COVID were unable to obviously be uh, going out into the field to these five different field trips. So uh, Nick and uh, Professor Ferenzi and all of the biology faculty uh, filmed uh, these different field trips and they went out to the landfill and, and um, uh, nature areas, the, the bog, uh, the, the hill out in back of campus. And so our students were able to virtually attend these field trips um, last spring and into the fall instead of actually making the trip. So we were pretty excited about that. We had 70 alumni and retired faculty uh, participate in that event that night. And it was, it was amazing. Uh, they did a wonderful presentation. We do have the video. It's actually a uh, highlight roll reel of all of the different field trips. And there was a lot of humor involved, but also it was just very interesting. We did a follow-up survey the next day. People were thrilled. So we're already working on a number of uh, other virtual events that we're gonna be hosting for our alumni. And it's never just for our alumni, our faculty and staff, our trustees, um, anybody that wants to join. We had some community members join us as well, just uh, friends of the college who support us. So it was just really an amazing evening. Um, a couple of other things, um, just wanted to let you know that uh, the Student Emergency Fund, the $75,000 grant, which you accepted this evening, uh, that we got from Lockheed Martin to support the Student Emergency Fund, um, 
has already probably half of it already been promised for for this semester alone we the uh, team has already received a hundred applications in three weeks and they've already promised forty two thousand dollars of that grant um, and we're only three weeks into the semester so um, our intent is to increase uh, with another grant to be able to cover student emergencies through the rest of the semester. Also just wanted to let you know that during the fall, um, we they had uh, 137 applications from students. 101 of those were female. Um, the average age of the students was 28. And uh, we collect a bunch of information, but um, some of the, um, uh, areas in which they needed assistance were uh, primarily for housing, for transportation. Um, we had a number of students that needed assistance with internet access, um, backup childcare, uh, medical bills that they had to pay out of pocket. And uh, it really um, was certainly that money that they um, gave out in the fall that was part of this grant um, was spent before Thanksgiving. Uh, so we anticipate that between the two semesters alone, um, there's probably gonna be about $130,000 worth of uh, student emergency fund grants given to students to, um, our hope is ensure that they can meet their immediate financial need and also stay in school and complete. So um, it's a program that really has be been the priority for us over this past year. Uh, and we're looking to do even more. So we are uh, keeping that initiative rolling beyond here. Um, I did wanna just tell you that um, we're so excited about the uh, uh, Sarah project that Dr. Haynes had mentioned because um, the name of that project is actually named after a long-term staff member from SUNY Broom, Harold Sunshine. And that was a uh, endowed fund that was set up to help support cross-disciplinary collaboration between departments. And I've got to tell you that um, this is the um, uh, creme de la creme of an example of how private support can make a huge difference and support our faculty who are brilliant and can really do these amazing and innovative things. So um, I'm confident that this is gonna turn out to be a model SUNY wide and even beyond. So it's very gratifying for us to know that um, the, the gifts that we receive can be used in this way because people are sharp and they're um, intuitive and, and they come up with these projects. So uh, it's just been very exciting. Um, for us. Um, and that about completes it. I did want to wish Maureen well. Uh, we're going to miss you terribly here, your smiling face and uh, uh, all of the interactive uh, work that you do in advocacy on behalf of our students um, in working with our department alone. Uh, we're going to miss you. Uh, thankfully, geographically, you're not going very far. Um, but for those of you that don't know, um, Maureen is a proud alumna of SUNY Broome. So she is now immediately drafted as one of our lead alumni volunteers. So we wanna keep you, keep you engaged. So that's my report. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Any questions for Kathy? Okay, um, 5.7 facilities update, Mr. Legaikis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you should have my report. Um, I'll touch briefly on some of the more important items. Uh, we're putting a contract in place which will provide for the installation of selected fire and smoke dampers, uh, duct access door installations and actuator replacements. Uh, we've been cited for uh, some deficiencies uh, during our annual uh, fire safety inspections and we are going to uh, correct those with this, uh, with this upcoming contract. Uh, we continue to have conversations with Siemens about uh, potential energy saving opportunities on campus. I want to I qualify one word that I used on my report and, and I spoke to an energy performance contract. We have not entered into any contract with Siemens or uh, we haven't really even began discussions about a contract. So I don't want anybody to be 
um, uh, under the assumption that a, a contract is is imminent. It's not. We we continue to have discussions, and we will continue to have those discussions. Uh, I've listed a number of um, um, uh, projects for which we will be getting design and architectural services in place for, uh, with the intent of hoping to go to contract with many of these this summer. Uh, some of the more notable ones are the um, relocation of the photography lab in the old science building, which will uh, increase the size of that lab, provide handicapped access, and uh, allow us to uh, in, increase enrollment in that, in that area. Um, we've got a couple of roof replacements on tap. Uh, we're also looking at um, a facade study of the library. We've had some movement on some of the exterior panels, and we want to take a closer look at why that's happening. Uh, as well as some parking lot paving and striping and additional sidewalk work on campus to, to improve access between buildings and from, from certain parking lots. Uh, our SUNY Broom maintenance staff continues their reconditioning and rehab work in a number of <coughs> offices and classrooms across campus, uh, mainly in Decker, uh, student services and old science. Um, I, I continue to note that we continually monitor uh, our HVAC systems, especially with respect to where we are with COVID to ensure that we have the right mix of fresh air and that air circulation is as effective and efficient as it can be. Um, I note that we are finalizing the, the uh, connection of Seaboard and uh, the 911 system down at the Culinary and Events Center. And lastly, the installation, which I've spoken to in the past of a a small permanent standby generator for the IT data center, which is located in the uh, in the business building. Um, that is my report, and I would be more than happy to answer any questions. Any questions for David? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, five point eight budget transfers, five point nine grant approvals, and five point ten investment reports. Michael, I'm assuming that's your standard. Yes, sir. Thank you. 5.11 human, human resource update, Ms. Fedorich. Good afternoon. Um, the personnel report reflects standard activity for January, 2021. Thank you. Thank you. 5.12 budget and finance update, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, thank you. So um, uh, there's a uh, monthly budget forecast update in your packet. Uh, in summary, it represents that the college continues to project a balanced budget uh, for the current fiscal year, which ends August uh, 31st. Uh, the college is really at a crossroads with uh, three different fiscal years. We're concluding with our external auditors, uh, Bonadio, uh, uh, last year's uh, audited financial statements, uh, which we expect uh, will go to the board most likely at next month's uh, March meeting. Uh, it might be an outside chance that it will be April, but at this point we think it will be um, um, uh, the March meeting. Uh, at this point, uh, there has not been any significant findings identified. So uh, we expect a, a clean audit to be presented to the board in March. Um, uh, meanwhile, as I just indicated, uh, we continue our best efforts to maintain a balanced budget for the current year. And at the same time, uh, we're currently uh, in the throes of developing next year's budget, which we anticipate presenting to the board at the April uh, board meeting. A uh, couple of key factors that are unknown at this point that really will drive next year's budget is uh, the, the current pending $1.9 trillion proposed federal stimulus package, that will really impact three major uh, stakeholders. One uh, being uh, the amount that will be approved for higher education, which would include uh, the community college. Uh, and the second most critical one is uh, aid to local governments, which includes two key uh, funders for the college, the state of New York, as well as uh, Broome County. So uh, hopefully 
federal stimulus package in one way, shape or form is approved over the next several weeks and that will impact what uh, the state budget will uh, bode for uh, community colleges. Again, uh, typically the state budget gets approved uh, generally on a timely basis, which would be on or about April 1st. So uh, meanwhile, we're trying to uh, uh, formulate the rest of the budget and um, uh, we'll have something to the board by uh, the April meeting. In addition to these uh, budgetary matters, the college is also uh, undergoing three pretty significant uh, audits. Uh, I mentioned our audited financial statements, that's an annual one, but there are two other significant ones that basically are uh, as, as we're told, a uh, random selection. One is uh, US Department of Education is doing a, a Title IV uh, financial aid audit. My understanding is the last time that was done at the college was uh, uh, 1999, uh, so well over 20 years ago. So um, uh, we've provided all the information uh, to uh, the Department of Education, and they are going to commence their audit on or about March 1st. Uh, in addition, the U.S. Department of Defense is conducting an audit that we're not aware ever was done uh, before at the college, and this is primarily for military students and um, uh, kind of veterans uh, uh, funding support. So uh, that uh, we've received notice. Uh, we haven't uh, yet started uh, getting information prepared for them, but we expect that to occur uh, fairly soon. And that concludes uh, budget and finance update for this month. Any questions for Michael? Thank you, Michael. Um, I'm looking at the agenda and I don't believe 5.13 exists looking at the minutes. So we'll go to 5.14, which is actually, actually 5.13 student and village housing report, Dr. Ross. Hi, good evening. The housing report is the standard report for the remittances and the bond payments. The only difference is at this juncture when the report was written, there were 164 residents. We're currently at 143. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Dr. Ross? Anthony, I got a question. I, uh, Cuomo sends out this daily or weekly uh, from the governor and said there were 11 uh, cases of that UK strain in New York City and one in Broome County. Anybody know anything about that? I read it in the paper this morning. I don't know. Nick, we just know there's one. We don't know. We don't know where the patient is. Oh, so you know about it though. All right. Yeah. Well, Kathy, you would know if they're in the hospital, obviously. Yeah, the um, county executive alerted UHS and Lords. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ross. Um, Five point one five media report, Jesse. Thank you. Um, standard media highlights should be there in the packet. Okay, thank you. Any other new business or? Can I, I just ask Carol a question? Why are there 20 fewer people in the uh, village? Um, one of the reasons is if students have an excessive bill or if they have not registered for classes, then um, according to the license, they cannot stay there. Um, but we have been trying to work with all of the students to make sure that all of their paperwork is in all of them, as many of them as can get registered. It's just too late now, and we don't have um, any trailer classes for those students to get in. So we have to remove them from the village. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, seeing there's no new business, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Nick, second by Kathy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passionately, everybody have a great weekend and thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Safe.